and tell them why you don't want that GMO and why you feel you have a right to have clean food. We have a right to our health. We, we shouldn't have to put up with this. We have a judicial system that is so warped. Um, I'm part of a, a lawsuit that basically asked a judge to say um, that we were a private organization and we, we, we bought it for cows and we wanted to, to have a judge tell us this was okay, this was legal. And what he came back with was that we don't have a fundamental right to, pursue, to produce and consume the foods of our choice. We don't have a right to own a cow. We don't have a right to have a contract with a farmer. Our business was not beyond the police state powers of the police state. Um, and then three weeks later, he resigned from the bench. He went to work for a lawsuit, uh, law firm that represents Monsanto. And now he's celebrating, he's just been elected to the bar of Wisconsin, the Bar Association. This president. is Patrick J. President. president, right. He's been elected president to the Bar Association. Um, how does that work? You know, how, how do we get there? How did we, how did we get to this place where judges feel they have so much power that they can dictate to an entire population, what is it, five million some people in Wisconsin? He can tell us what we can and can't eat, what we can feed our children, and that we have no choice. Uh, so that's my message, is, is to don't take it, question it, and do whatever you can to spread that word. I'm, I'm gonna jump in here a little bit. Um, I'm, my name is Kay Craig, and Wayne and I have an organic farm near New Ball State. We've been organic for, since 2004, and we also have a lawsuit that was together, same lawsuit, uh, different different issues, never never should have been put together. Uh, it's, uh, it is an appeal right now, it's been an appeal for about a year and a half. Uh, our legal system does move very slowly, although apparently it does move. But I, the thing I wanted to talk about when we talk about organics and GMO, and, and I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, you guys, but the, the word natural, uh, be on the lookout for it. It doesn't mean anything. I, we run into this a lot as an organic farm. Um, our our uh, people will, will say, well, they're raising their own, you know, they're raising their own chickens and they're, they're feeding them natural feeds and they're feeding them. Keep in, just keep in mind that the, the natural feeds, you know, over 80% of the corn is genetically modified, over 90% of the soybeans are genetically modified. So uh, be careful of the word natural. Uh, when you see that, as my sister likes to do, she goes into the store and asks for the unnatural chicken. <laughs> and they look at her. But, uh, so that, that was what I wanted to add to the conversation. But okay, <coughs> natural does mean something. It means whatever the sales manager decides it means on any given day. Right, everything's natural. So, and, and whatever claims they make, no antibiotics or hormones, None of, unlike organics, where you're inspected every year, your paperwork's are scrutinized, no, there's no independent no, oversight of those claims. No, absolutely none. I, I guess the other thing I wanted to add regarding the GMOs, and in particular the Roundup Ready GMOs, is if you aren't familiar with Dr. Huber, he's in Meredith's Press from Purdue, he's retired, but if you go on YouTube, there's this, a lot of videos that he's put out, and one of the latest ones I saw, he's actually, they have some pretty good information about some of the problems with GMOs and with Roundup Ready, and those, they were trying to go to several journals in the United States, and they were not allowed to print that there, and they went to the most prestigious one in Europe, and they did get that, their studies printed there, but the suppression is very strong, and it's going on here in the U.S., and we need to be aware of it. What was that? <clears throat> Dr. Huber, H-U-B-E-R. If, if you go to uh, Dr. Mercola, Mercola.com, he does really a great, very professional video. He, he did two one-hour interviews with um, Dr. Huber that just knocked my socks off. Powerful stuff, powerful. My turn? Your turn. Okay, my turn. I guess I have uh, three things to say. I'm, I'm Mark Baker. I, I have a farm and a lawsuit, too. And, uh, <laughs> I feel terrible. I don't know. Well, wait, 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 wait. Cornucopia, Cornucopia is suing Monsanto twice. Oh, but, but in Wisconsin, I feel like a second-class citizen. 
work on that. Okay, I'll try that. Well, I'm over here from uh, Michigan, and my lawsuit has to do with with uh, pigs. For anybody that wasn't here last night, we talked a little bit about that. I won't go into it. But one thing to be aware of is Monsanto's genetically mod modified organism, GMO, if you don't know that, includes uh, fauna, you know, flora and fauna. So they've come up with a salmon, and I know they have a pig. And uh, so that's something to be on the lookout for, and who knows what else. Uh, I won't say too much about human beings. But, um, one of the things that I think, my second thing, is one of the things, the way that you can take this into your own hands is to grow your own food. Um, it's not too difficult to get open pollinated vegetable seeds and learn how to save those seeds and save a lot of seeds and then teach that to your, your friends and neighbors how to do that. That's, that's something you can do and it's really effective because on a small piece of ground you can grow a lot of food. And then the third thing I would say is having to do with Monsanto. Monsanto, their model is a little bit like the military. And I spent 20 years in the military. And I can tell you what we do. We get to a country that we're going to wage war in. And the first thing we do is we let the people there know that they don't have a chance. And Monsanto is doing that right now. They're letting you know you have no chance. And that's what's called a side, a side ops or a psychological operation. And it's, it's not true. You do have a chance. There are several options that have been talked about here. And so there are things that you can do. They haven't whooped you yet. And uh, every time I turn around, uh, you know, if you pay attention to Monsanto, they seem to shoot themselves in the foot pretty good. In most countries, they're not allowed. And uh, like this last thing with uh, want to put aspartame in milk. Uh, as somebody who produces raw milk, I, was, I felt, yeah, good, do it, do it tomorrow. <laughs> It'll drive business to me. So that's what I have to say about Monsanto. Thanks, Mark, and that's a, a great segue into the next topic, which is, since we're talking about the bigger picture, it's about how do we, how do we really reach the, the tipping point of consumers. Now everybody, everybody here is pretty much choir already. You know, we're preaching to the choir. But, but like what Ajna was saying last yeah, night, that um, she, Ajna was saying that you know we're planting seeds, and then every time we plant a seed, it, that's going to grow more seeds. So every time you all talk to somebody about these issues, you're getting them involved as well. And then also, what really struck me last night was when David said, um, you know, "We're going to run out of farmers before we." run out of excuses. And, and that's so true. So, you know, Mark had some really great words just now, but um, I'd like for each of you to, to address, like, what, what is it? What do we need, what do we, as farmers and as organizational leaders, what do we need to do to increase the consumer attention on this and the consumer involvement? How do we move people from excuses into action? So, Mark and, and Kay, if you, or uh, I'm sorry, Wayne and Kay, there's too many Marks. If you can, if you can just address that briefly on, on, on your farm, and then Mark and Mark and Gail. Thanks. Well, a couple of things. We have this on farm store, and we're a West Indian Price chapter. And this last summer in August, actually, we, we had a, a consumer or a customer pasture walk, and we had like 130 people there, and it was really. A beautiful day, it was not the best weather day, but we still had great people and it was a lot of enthusiasm and, and there's still a lot of confusion about what organic is and so it's all part of that education process and for us it's getting them on the farm, I think that's our thing. 